How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. I'm going to talk about uh, who I am, what my background is, what I like to do, how I got into woodworking, um, what my plans are for the future of my woodworking business and this channel and stuff like that. If you want to know, stick around. So a few days ago, or maybe it'll be several days by the time I get this edited, but I put a poll, uh, a poll out to ask my subscribers um, if they were interested in me doing a video about me and all the stuff that I just mentioned. And something like, at the time of me recording this, something like eight or nine of you all said yes, 100%. So this video is for you. Hopefully the eight of you will watch this and hopefully maybe a few more will, but in any case, you wanted it and uh, I don't mind doing it so uh, I'll put this one out for you guys and uh, again any anything that you want me to do a video on um, just ask in the comments you know and when I have time I'll do it if I can but uh, so anyway I guess uh, let me tell you a little bit about me so I am 49 years old currently I was born in Southern California in the LA area and uh, kind of grew up all over the place. My dad was, well, he was a Marine during the Vietnam time, but then he joined, he got out of the Marines and then joined the Army, and he ended up retiring from the Army. Yeah. So yeah. I moved to Virginia to live with my dad when I was in, like, fifth grade or something. And from, like, fifth grade to tenth grade, I lived there. And that was a very important, informative time in my life. So I, I'm actually kind of very outdoorsy. I like to fish and hunt and stuff like that, which I don't get to do hardly ever or at all here in California. But, um, you know, I'll get to why we're, I'm here in a minute. But um, I, I took a woodshop class when I was in, like, seventh or eighth grade when I was there in Virginia and really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. And... Um, didn't touch woodworking for years after that, for decades after that. And again, come to how I came back into it. But uh, I really had a good time with it and uh, had a knack for it. I did well in it. So living there in Virginia all that time as a young boy, i um, that's how I became a Redskins fan. You know, people always ask me, you're from California. You live in California. How were you ever a Redskins fan? Well, that's why. They were really good back then in the 80s. Uh, I am still a Redskins fan. They don't exist anymore. I, uh, I don't watch football anymore. I haven't for several years now, but uh, uh, there's that. So you will see Redskins stuff around the shop if you pay attention or watch that shop tour video because it's there and I'm not going to take it down. But um, that's why. That's why I'm a Redskins fan. So um, after we left Virginia, when I was in about 10th grade, we came back to California. My dad got stationed at Fort Ord, which is up north near Monterey. Um, and that's where I graduated high school. And from there, uh, I ended up joining the Army. I enlisted originally as a um, 96 Bravo, I think. I don't, I don't remember the MOS number, but I was, a, I was an intelligence analyst. That's what I enlisted for in the reserves originally went to basic training went to AIT and uh, came back to my reserve unit and did that for a little while about a year got married um, to my first wife look I was guys I was in the military for a long time and then I was a military contractor for a long time and running around all over the world and ended up getting married three times out of it it's not something I'm proud of but kind of goes along with the military life you know um, but, you know, I'm married to my, the love of my life now. She's a great woman. Um, you know, I ended up in the right place, so I'm, I'm happy about it. But uh, that being said, uh, I got married to my first wife, and uh, they shipped me off to Germany um, on my first active duty assignment. And I lived there for, oh gosh, four years. Yeah, four years. And while I was there, I went to Bosnia a couple of times, deployed to Bosnia a couple of times. And um, after that, I went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, by that time, me and my first wife were separated. And uh, when I got out of the Army in 99, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was playing guitar and, you know, that sort of thing a lot at that time. 
So I kind of did the starving musician thing in Nashville for a little while, just uh, not very long. You know, I played in a couple of like coffee shops and bars for tips, things like that, and was kind of sleeping in my car and all that. And uh, it's cool. It's a good experience. But uh, and I'm okay on the guitar. I don't have you know a uh, the voice of a superstar though when I sing. So uh, that was you know never gonna be a full time thing for me. But uh, after I, after I got out and I did that, I moved down to Atlanta for about six months. I was working as a maintenance guy in a, in a dairy production plant there. And that was a pretty cool job. I learned a lot of really neat things there. I learned how to weld. I learned how to do plumbing and tiling and all kinds of kind of facility type maintenance stuff. Um, so, you know, that was actually a lot of fun. But uh, I, uh, I ended up moving back to Germany. Uh, because uh, an old friend of mine who I had known for a long time from Germany came to visit and one thing led to another and that ended up becoming my second wife and she was German. So I moved back to Germany. I got a job there working as the manager of an automotive maintenance facility on the base. So I was a car mechanic for a while and managing a car mechanic facility for about four years when I was there. Um, I also went to college. I used my GI Bill. Got a degree in English with a minor in journalism. Graduated cum laude, did very well, which was um, good because I was not a great student in high school. Anyway, so I decided, hey, I got a college degree. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna be a famous journalist or writer or I, whatever. I can just get a job making hundreds of thousands of dollars because I have a college degree. Well, uh, any of you guys that have a college degree probably know that, that that's not how that actually works, but. I actually did end up writing a book. I have a book. It's out there. You can buy it. I guess I can leave a link to it um, in the description for you below if you are interested in it. It's poetry. Nobody reads it. Uh, a couple people here buy it. But uh, anyway, I did write a book and I have been working on a novel for a long time. I started writing that novel when I was in school to be an Apache mechanic. So I started writing that in 1993 and I still haven't finished it yet. Uh, in fact, back then it was a pretty novel concept. It, it did, didn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, people with that kind of a story. And it's kind of a, I guess like a John Wick-esque type of a story. But uh, now, you know, it's been beaten half to death. So I don't know if I'll ever uh, finish it or not. Um, but anyway, yeah. The whole writing thing didn't pan out, you know, so I didn't move on to other things. So anyway, we packed everything up and we moved back here to Southern California. Me, and when I say we, it was me, my wife, and um, we have two kids. They're now, you know, all grown up. My my son's in his 20s and my daughter is around 20. So the other, you know, they're big now. They, they all live in Germany still. But anyway, um, we came back here and uh, I worked as... A car mechanic for a very short amount of time and then I worked for Dish Network for a couple of years as an installer installing satellite dishes on people's houses uh, and you know all that time I, I forgot to mention something when I went on active duty I changed my MOS I was no longer an intelligence analyst I changed to be a Apache helicopter mechanic so I had to go back to school for that before I went to Germany um, but anyway I did that in the army for six years on active duty and uh, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just, I think when I got out of the army, I just wanted to kind of let all that go. You know, I wanted to grow my hair out. I wanted to do something different. Um, I wanted to get my college degree, which I did. Um, so I intentionally stayed away from that, even though, um, you know, that was a more logical career choice for me because I had the experience and the training and it would have paid quite a bit more obviously than doing the kind of stuff that I was doing at that time. But uh, yeah, right around then is when me and my second wife split up. She took the kids and went back to Germany. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm at a crossroads. What do I do now? Uh, so I started looking around and I got an offer to job. I got offered a job in Texas working as a helicopter mechanic on Apache helicopters on a, on a military um, contracting program there. And so I went there and I did that and I was there for, I don't know, around a year or so. And uh, a job came up in Kuwait in the Middle East um, with Boeing that, you know, again, I didn't have any family at the time. My kids were overseas in Germany and I just figured, heck, you know, it's more money. Um, 
you know, the deploying thing doesn't really bother me, especially when I don't have a family that I have to, you know, come home to every day. But um, it also would have gotten me closer to them and it had some perks, you know, it was more money, a lot of vacation time. So I would be able to go, it, it was a shorter flight from Kuwait to Germany than from California to Germany. So I would, be able, I would be able to go see my kids more often and that sort of thing. So I went and took that job and um, I ended up staying there for about four years and that's where I met my current wife. <laughs> so that's how we met. Um, she was working there. Um, she's from the Philippines. And anyway, um, I ended up leaving Kuwait after about four years and I went to the UAE and I was working in uh, Abu Dhabi for a, a while. From the UAE, I got offered a job in Iraq. Then they just sent me from there to Afghanistan and uh, I went, uh, I was in Afghanistan for a while. Uh, my wife was still living in our apartment in Kuwait. She was pregnant. She got pregnant in between Iraq and Afghanistan when I stopped there for a few weeks. And um, I needed to get her out of there because, you know, it's Kuwait is not friendly to unmarried women that are <laughs> pregnant. Uh, so, you know, we did the work. We got all the paperwork sorted out and we got on a plane and I moved us back to the United States. And I got a job in Kansas, actually, as the technical inspector on an Apache program at Fort Riley there. Um, I was there for about a year or so. And then they sent me back to Kandahar again. So I went back to Afghanistan. We were glad to leave my wife at home for a while. And, uh, you know, she didn't like that very much. She was, you know, new to the States. She didn't have a car. I'd have people that I worked with there drive her back and forth to the grocery store every week. It was, it was kind of a mess. So anyway, I got to, I went to Kandahar and I was, I only had to go for about four or five months, I think. And then, um, then they sent me back to Germany. There was a contract in Germany and, uh, I was all for that because I had two kids there. So my wife and my daughter, who was just, you know, a baby at the time, moved to Germany and we stayed there for about a year. And after that, we went back to Fort Riley and we were there for a little while again. And then I, I realized that at that point that, look, I got to stop because my wife got pregnant again and our son was on the way. And I realized that uh, I got to stop all this contracting. I got to stop all this running and jumping around all over the world and leaving the house. I need to be home for my family. I had already screwed up two marriages. I needed to, you know, that wasn't all my fault, but you know, whatever. But, uh, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want the same thing to happen again. And I needed to have a more concrete stay at home kind of lifestyle. So, um, I found a job in the LA area working for the government, but it was a full-time DOD, you know, type of job as quality guy on, in, aerospace industry same um we went down there and we did that and i was there for years for f like three or four years and uh it, it, the job was good and everything was fine there but uh, i was just miserable in southern california or in that area in the la area i don't like the people i don't like not people specifically i mean I'm a combat vet, so I have issues with anxiety and, you know, being in crowds and all that anyway. So, yes, that's a problem. Um, I'm not very social in general. So it was very difficult for me to start this channel because being in front of the camera was not easy for me. Um, I'm getting a little better at it, I think, as I go. But uh, you guys be the judge. I don't know. But anyway, um, I had to get out of there. It was it was causing me some mental distress living there and uh, I just I had to get away all the traffic the smog the people it just it was too much I was profoundly unhappy so uh, a job came up in what we call in this area up the hill which is in the high desert which is like halfway between LA and Las Vegas um, very rural compared to down there you know different completely different uh, atmosphere as far as everything goes um, the, the, you know, everything. Um, so I got that job and I was a quality engineer for the company that builds the Predator drones for a couple of years. And, um, we moved up here, we bought a house, we settled down. We've been here for five years now. And again, five years ago, I was not a woodworker yet. We're going to get to that in a second, but that's how it started right in that transition time. And this workshop, that you see now used to be a man cave like a game room pool table it was all decked out all i'll try to i think i have a picture i'll show you guys but uh 
anyway, we moved up here and then I, I worked there for, for years and then the whole pandemic thing happened and um, certain requirements were put on everybody, especially if you worked for a government contractor that I was not wanting to be a part of. So I started looking around for another job again and uh, there was a medical type of a company up here in the area that was looking for a quality manager. And um, they actually headhunted me. I didn't apply for it. They had somebody that contacted me about it. And because of all that was going on, I took the job. And that's where I'm at now. I'm the quality manager of a, of a, comp of a manufacturing company up here now. But uh, my goal now is to become a full-time woodworker. So now let's segue to the woodworking part of it. So yeah, when, when, we, when we made the move from the L.A. area to up here, uh, we were living in, I bought a two-bedroom um, trailer mobile home in a in a trailer park uh it was nice you know it was a newer one but uh, when we moved there was an issue with the stairs that came up to the front door and uh they were kind of dry rotted and falling apart and the termite inspector said that oh termites are not there now but they could be so it wasn't passing the termite inspection and they wanted to fix it and they wanted me to pay them something like a thousand dollars seven hundred dollars or something and it was literally just two by sixes, right? I mean, and they were cut in a certain way and they were painted and all that. And I was like, I think I can go buy a two by six for like eight bucks and, you know, or a couple of them for 20, less than 20 bucks and a couple of tools and fix that myself in like a day. And that's exactly what I did. I took the old pickets down, um, made some new ones. I went out and uh, I didn't buy it. I think my dad gave me a Ryobi circular saw uh, back then. And I just used that, made a couple of pickets, replaced them, repainted them, and that kind of put the bug back in me. I was like, man, I remember that woodshop class that I had, and I really liked that, and I really enjoyed doing that little tiny bit of woodworking, which I don't know if you would call it woodworking, maybe more like carpentry type work, but that I that I did, you know, to get that house ready. So when I got up here, that kind of stuck with me, you know, and again, I turned this place into a game room, but uh, little by little, when you own your own house, you know, there's lots of stuff to do. There's lots of stuff that you want to do, things that you want to make, furniture, all this stuff comes up. And that's what happened. And so I just started collecting tools. And slowly my man cave turned into a wood shop over the course of a couple of years. Um, the pool table got moved outside under the patio that we have out there. And now this is what's in here. Um, but yeah, so I started out just watching YouTube, you know, I watched a lot of guys, you know, like Steve Ramsey and um, Matt Outlaw and, you know, all, all of those guys, you know, and it inspired me to, to get back into woodworking and to try to make it as like a side hustle type of thing. Um, and I got started like a lot of people do making flags, American flags. And I made lots and lots of American flags. And then I started making crosses and then I just started branching out, making coat racks and, concealment boxes and all of them with the same theme starting with flags um you know i also made our dining room table which we still have as our dining room table it's a farmhouse style with construction grade wood but uh you know i made that um i made our dog house and then our neighbors saw it and they wanted one so i made them a dog house i made our cat tree i'll try to put pictures in here of all that stuff as i'm talking so that you can see it but uh um and then i had to do some door trim and I have a video about that because the drywall was proud of the door jam when we replaced the door to the between the house and the shop here. But um, yeah, and it just it just kind of snowballed from there. And after a couple of years of collecting tools and making little things and that sort of thing, I was like, well, I, I'm gonna start selling this stuff. And then you know, I want to get tax write offs for all these tools because I was about to start buying big tools. Like I was, I knew I was gonna invest in a CNC, and I knew at some point I wanted a saw stop. And I knew I was going to be buying tens of thousands of dollars worth of tools eventually. Um, and I thought, man, if I'm going to buy all these tools anyway, I'm, I might as well make a business out of it. I can write them off, make some money on the side in addition to that. And that's how it started, you know. And uh, I'll do a video about all the, the business stuff. I don't want to give any business advice or how to do that because it's going to be different where you live and where I live. And there's a lot here in Southern California. But um I'll, I'll do a video on that actually as part of my series on the, that's coming up on the uh, craft 
fairs and where to sell and all that stuff. But anyway, um, so I went and I, you know, set up the business entity the way that I needed to for here and started going to little local craft shows and craft fairs and, you know, things like that. And then I branched out into gun shows and, uh, you know, I, and, and that's what I started doing. And the, the crosses were selling like crazy. The flags sell really well too. The concealment boxes um, sell very well. Depends on the venue. Typically gun shows are better places for those. But um, yeah, and I just started making all that stuff in batches and making large amounts of them. And that led to people asking, hey, can you make this? Can you make that? Like, can you make a desk? Can you do this? Can you do that? Charcuterie boards, you know, so... You know, I've done all of that stuff of charcuterie boards. I have not made cutting boards. A um, couple reasons. One, I it's that's a lot of work to make a good cutting board. I applaud all of you guys that make cutting boards because that is a whole ton of work. And you know, and, he, and to make it easy and efficient, you need some specialty tools. Like honestly, I don't think I I, I know that I would never get into the the business of of mass producing cutting boards unless I had a, um, a drum sander. I only recently got a planer that's relatively new. So that would have been another thing that would have been necessary, a good accurate table saw, which I also have now, but, uh, you know, I have the things now that I could do a cutting board if I wanted to, or some cutting boards, but man, it's a lot of work and, and, you know, the wood is expensive. And I don't compromise on my pricing for my hours and my time. So they would be really expensive. And typically they are. And that's why they're very expensive. And they're very difficult to sell. I have a friend that does woodworking full time in this area. And he makes a lot of really beautiful cutting boards, custom cutting boards. But they don't seem to, to me to sell very well. He sells a lot of stuff, actually like flags and things, because those things sell. Um, and they're, you know, they're not usually as expensive as a, as a really good quality end grain cutting board that is made of exotic hardwoods and has special inlays or, you know, customized or whatever. But uh, that's the reason. So I'm not uh, real super interested in doing a cutting board. If somebody wanted one and they were willing to pay what I'm charging for it, I would definitely make one. But uh, again, I wouldn't like be mass producing them unless I had some different tooling. Um, it, you know, it could be a possibility. My wife is a real estate broker and, you know, if I, if I wanted to do this full time, I would have to consider branching out to doing something like that because, uh, there's, there's money there, you know, real estate agents like to buy stuff like cutting boards and charcuterie boards, especially, especially those that are, uh, can, are customized for their clients for like closing gifts and things like that. So, you know, people like Jenny and Davis make a lot of money doing exactly that. Um, I, I, I prefer to do more, to do bigger, more interesting things to me. I like to do new stuff that I've never done before. Like I had a good time doing that, that new flag uh, and I'm going to do more of those now. Um, but they're custom, you know, so they will be made to order because I don't have a lot of space to be stacking up inventory on things. But anyway, in a nutshell, that's, that's how I got into woodworking. That's what I started making, that's what I make now. Um, I'm transit. I'm trying to transition to do more bigger stuff like furniture and things. And you're going to see coming soon in over the next year on this channel. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be doing is exactly that. I need to make a desk. I'll show you why in a minute. But I need to make a desk. I plan to make that out of walnut um, and maybe another hardwood. Uh, I plan to do some more furniture for inside my own house. Um, I We'll hopefully be doing furniture for clients as well. I need to make a new king size bed for my bedroom. Um, there's closet work that needs to be done in all three of the bedrooms in my house. Like I'm going to do complete built-ins in all of the big closets, new doors, probably barn door style sliding doors on them and all that. And I'll make videos and all that stuff. That stuff is all coming up. So it won't be just flag stuff. Um, the only reason that that's been the majority of my content up until now is because uh, I do that a lot, often, all the time to get ready, you know, for shows and stuff. In fact, I've got another one in a week from today that I'm going to be working all week and the rest of this weekend getting ready for that, making stuff that you've already seen in the videos. I got to make more crosses, more key boxes and key hangers and all flags and all that stuff. So I'm working on all that now. But uh Anyway, that, that's my woodworking journey. Uh, I plan to continue. Uh, my goal is to make it full time.
that's why I started the channel because the thing with any any business is that you have to diversify your income streams, right? And um, YouTube is just one of them. Uh, and that, I guess, will kind of segue into my plans for the channel with, with that. Um, so the channel's going to grow. It's going to grow like any other channel. Um, I do, as you've seen, tool reviews from time to time. That is definitely not going to be the focus of this channel because I love woodworking. It's very cathartic for me. I enjoy doing it. I'll never stop. Um, I want to be a woodworker. I want to make things and I want to sell the things that I make. The YouTube channel is, is again, just um, another revenue stream for the business, along with things like the affiliate links that, you know, the Amazon affiliate links that are in the description of almost every video. When you guys click on those and, and use them, you know, I get a small kickback. It's pennies, it's cents on whatever, you know, you guys buy. And that, that adds up, though, and there's a lot of them, you know, over a course of time. So that's another revenue stream, you know, besides the channel that, that I also can employ. Um, but my heart is really in the woodworking aspect of it. So that's not ever going to stop. So there's going to be lots of build videos from here on out for the life of this channel with tool reviews sprinkled in. You know, I, I did a couple of videos on my saw stop. And when I hit a year on that, I'll probably do an a one year review on it and the CNC actually pretty soon. I think I got that in May. So yeah, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of that. But um, yeah, and again, I still plan to do all the videos that I said I was gonna do. I have to show you guys how I made this this CNC table and enclosure and my, my tool bench over there and my four by eight bench and the modifications that I did. Originally my table saw was in that one and um, my miter station and all that stuff, you know, and plus lots of jigs. I already, I'm in the process of designing a jig for the crosses. I have a flag jig already that I think I'm going to actually rebuild because I want to have one that's a little bit larger and make a few tweaks to it to make it even better. And of course that will all be recorded and any kind of jig or thing like that that I make for the shop, you know, I'm going to make it, uh, I need a table saw so I don't have one. So that all that stuff is going to be coming up, you know, as I have time. Unfortunately, I still have a full-time job, so I have to kind of put things in between. If I if I had the time, I would put out a video every week or more than one a week if I could. But, you know, right now I'm struggling to get one out every two or three weeks, uh, be, you know, just because I have life and a job and all the other things that come with that. But um, I'm also working on a website right now. So that'll be another stream of income once I get that set up. But again, all this stuff just takes so much time. Like uh, I've already made plans for how to make the four by eight workbench, just the workbench without the modification for the table saw and the three by six workbench, um, which is one you see with all my tools and stuff on it over there. But that's obviously been heavily modified also. I have, but I have the plans just for the benches. Um, I'm also going to make plans for the modifications that I've done, the modifications that I'm still yet going to do. Uh, those bench plans, all of my fixtures in here, the miter station, the, the table for the um, CNC, they all have the exact same structure and uh, framing the, as far as the benches go, the, base, the bases of them. And all you have to do is change the um, dimensions and you know modify the plan a little bit to make whatever size that you're trying to make so those plans are kind of generalized um, to the point where you can use those to make whatever size bench you want and then i will make plans for the various modifications that i make and again those will have to be further modified even to um, fit whatever size bench that the person has built but uh, again, that's why I like that style that I, I, I saw it on a YouTube video. I just, for life of me, I, it, it wasn't like a famous YouTuber. Um, but uh, that's where I got the, 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 the construction design from. And it's great. I love it. And it's worked out for all of my stuff. And, uh, you know, anyway, so, um, yeah, plans for all that stuff. Plans for my jigs, my flag jigs, all that stuff. That's all going to end up being on the website to be sold. Um, I may or may not put it on Etsy. I think I probably will have to, at least at first, because I'll use this YouTube channel to drive people to the website. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, there's just so many more people shopping on Etsy. So I'll probably end up having to put them on there, too. But uh, 
Um, I'm also making my own board butter. I've been making it for a while. I don't call it board butter. I call it wood conditioner, Mavericks wood conditioner. Um, uh, so I'll be selling that too. Uh, I started making it a while ago because like I was using the stuff from Home Depot. I think it's Howard's brand and man, I just, I just didn't like it. Um, I didn't like the consistency of it. I didn't think that it was giving me the results that I was wanting to get. So I started playing around with, um, you know, various amounts of mineral oil and beeswax and different types of beeswax and all that stuff and watched a bunch of videos watched matt outlaw's video and uh, um came up with my my own concoction for it and and man i won't use anything else now i i love it it comes out the 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 look of the wood after it comes out is in my opinion better and um it lasts longer it's just i really really like it so you know i'll be selling that all of that is going to be on the website at some point. I'm working on it and I'm not going to stop. This is my plan. This is my goal. Again, I'm almost 50 years old. And to be honest with you, I'm just tired of working for other people. I'm tired of renting my time out to make other people rich. And I don't mind working hard, you know, and long hours if I'm doing it for myself. And, you know, I can be around my family as much as I want. And I can work when I want and on my schedule and do what I want when I want to do, you know, that's, that's the sort of thing that I'm, I'm looking for now. I'm at that, you know, retirement type of age where I just don't want to have a nine to five anymore. And this is the way that I plan to achieve it is through woodworking. So, Hey, thanks for being on the journey with me guys. You know, that's, that's honestly it. That's my story. That's the whole, the whole thing about me. And, um, this probably went on way longer than I, than I thought it was going to. I didn't realize I was going to give you that much detail. But anyway, if you have any other questions, let me know, you know, in the comments. And uh, I'm happy to answer them. At this point, I don't have so many comments that I can't answer every single one. So I do. I answer every single comment. And I will continue to as long as I can. At some point, you know, if I get to the point uh, where, you know, people like Steve Ramsey are, where they have like a million viewers, which I think that's astronomical. I don't expect I'll ever get to that point. I, I don't have the charisma that those guys have. Um, and I don't uh, plan to do the kind of videos that especially, you know, other channels do where they, they kind of transition into being tool review videos and top five this and, and all that. I, I mean, I'll probably do some of those from time to time because they will bring in viewers and they'll bring in uh, subscribers and stuff like that. But no, I mean, like I said, my heart's in the woodworking. So that's where I'm going to stay. Um, and I, you know, my viewership is probably going to suffer for that, but it's all good. You know, again, it's just part of a, of a multi-faceted income stream. And altogether, hopefully it'll get me to the point, once I get to the point that I can cover everything that I cover with my day job, with what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to go into this full time. And then, you know, again, the videos are going to ramp up. The project's going to ramp up. It's going to get better because I'll have nothing but time to do what I want to do. So anyway, that's the plan. Guys, I really appreciate you sticking around if you were for the whole time for this video. And uh, again, even if only the eight of you asked for it are watching it, well, here you go. I'm happy to make it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy woodworking. I'll see you on the next one.